In the previous lectures we discussed hypertension pathophysiology and treatment. Today we'll start talking about diuretics. But first there are some basics we should know about, renal physiology and sodium reabsorption process. The PDF of this lecture will be down in the description. Simply what are the diuretics? They are drugs that increase urine output, by decreasing renal sodium reabsorption by different mechanisms, and this increases loss of sodium in water in urine. Let's briefly talk about some renal physiology basics. The kidneys play an important role in maintaining the volume and composition of extracellular fluids, by selective regulation of solute and fluid reabsorption. Each kidney is composed of two parts, cortex and medulla. Renal blood flow, the volume of the blood delivered to kidney per minute, equals 1200 milliliters per minute. Glomerular filtration rate, the volume of fluid filtered by renal glomerulus per minute, equals from 90, to 120 milliliters per minute, that equals 170 liters per day. About 99% of the filtrate is reabsorbed by renal tubules into the blood, so about 1.5 liters per day from the filtered 170 liters per day, is excreted as urine. The functional unit of excretion in kidneys is nephron, each kidney contains about 1 million nephrons. Nephron consists of glomerulus, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of hinyl, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting tubule. Now let's talk about the steps of excretion, the first step is glomerular filtration. First, blood goes to the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole to be filtered by diffusion, under high pressure in Bowman's capsule, then blood is discharged to the efferent arteriole. Small molecules and ions can easily pass to the filtrate, but big molecules such as RBCs and plasma proteins, with any drugs bound to them, cannot pass, that means they are not filtered. The second step is, tubular reabsorption. The body discovers that it needs most of the materials that present now in the filtrate. So reabsorption of sodium, water and any needed material from the tubules lumen to the blood occurs. And this is done in nephron parts other than glomerulus. Each part of them has certain capacity of reabsorption process. Proximal convoluted tubule is responsible for reabsorption of about 65% of sodium ions. Loop of henyl. 25% of sodium ions. Distal convoluted tubule, 6% of sodium ions. Collecting tubule, 4% of sodium ions. Note that wherever sodium goes, water goes, so as sodium reabsorption increases water reabsorption increases. The third step is, tubular secretion. The body chooses to discharge some materials actively using carriers and energy from the blood directly into the tubular lumen, to the filtrate. Now let's discuss sodium reabsorption mechanisms, to be able to understand the mechanisms of the different groups of the diuretics. Proximal convoluted tubule. Responsible for reabsorption of 70 to 75 percent of filtrate from urine to blood. 65 percent of sodium is reabsorbed as the concentration gradient between filtrate and blood is very high. High concentration of sodium in filtrate, so sodium moves from filtrate to blood by passive diffusion by two transport systems. The first one is symporter or co-transport, which is a carrier for reabsorption of two or more molecules in the same direction. And it is responsible for the reabsorption of sodium with glucose, or amino acids. And the second is antiporter which is a carrier for exchange of two molecules in opposite directions. And it is responsible for the reabsorption of sodium and excretion of a proton. Firstly sodium enters the cell of the lumen through an antiport mechanism in exchange with a proton. Then it is discharged into the blood through sodium potassium ATPase pump. Then a proton present in urine bind to bicarbonate, to form carbonic acid which then dissociate to carbon dioxide plus water, released in urine. Carbon dioxide diffuses, and react with water again to enter another cycle, and so on.
the binding and association of carbon dioxide and water into carbonic acid, is mediated by carbonic anhydrase enzyme. This enzyme is responsible for production of protons that help sodium to enter the cell, so if this enzyme is inhibited, sodium will not be reabsorbed from this part of nephron. Lupophenyl. It normally causes 25% of sodium reabsorption, but also it can compensate the reabsorption of sodium if it was inhibited in proximal convoluted tubule. It consists of descending limb, base and ascending limb. In descending limb water can pass from the lumen to the blood till reaching the base, where water reabsorption stops. The ascending limb contains the sodium potassium chloride symporter carrier, which is responsible for 25% of sodium reabsorption. Then sodium is discharged into the blood through sodium potassium ATPase pump. Calcium and magnesium pass freely to blood in the same direction of sodium ions. Distal convoluted tubules are responsible for reabsorption of 6% of sodium using sodium chloride symporter carrier. Then sodium is discharged into the blood through sodium potassium ATPase pump. Here reabsorption of sodium is associated with secretion of calcium ions from the blood to urine. Collecting tubules are responsible for reabsorption of 4% of sodium. Collecting ducts are under hormonal control. The suppressin, or any diuretic hormone, ADH, which is responsible for water reabsorption. And aldosterone, which is responsible for sodium reabsorption and potassium secretion. In the next lecture we'll discuss the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, osmotic diuretics, loop diuretics, thiazide diuretics and potassium sparing diuretics. We'll talk about their actions, uses and side effects. If this lecture was useful for you, leave like and a comment of your opinion, subscribe if it's your first time here and keep following us.